eating well, got allergies, need to lose weight? If you want to feel better, please tune into my health talk show Sunday mornings at 10, the Dr. Bob Martin Show on Talk 1470 WNN. Would you like to have a wider, brighter smile? Well, you can at J.J. Dental for the month of March in office teeth whitening for just $250. The usual cost, 6 but for the month of March, just $250. Call and schedule your appointment today. 954-463-7262. 954-463-7262. Online, jjdentalpractice.com. If you're tired of losing money when the stock market goes down, then feel you're not making enough when it goes back up, take an investment class at Online Trading Academy. For two decades, Online Trading Academy has taught over 200,000 students how to time the markets, how to pick the right stocks, how to limit risk, and how money is made in up sideways and down markets. All instructors are certified, currently trade, and profitable. They show you what they do every day with stocks, options, futures, forex, and now Bitcoin. So if you're tired of losing money when the market goes down, then feel you're not making enough when it finally goes back up, call now for a pair of tickets to a free sample half-day class in Broward or Palm Beach and see for yourself how educated investors make trades. Online Trading Academy, the leader in investment education. Call 954-668-2510. 954-668-2510. 954-668-2510. What you want to know. What you need to know. Talk 1470 WNN. The opinions expressed on the following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Are you a family caregiver? Are you caregiving for someone who can no longer take care of themselves? Are you overwhelmed? This is Caregiver Solutions Info with Marsha Teal. Marsha will be hosting an hour of true stories and information, tips and updates of the latest research and necessary information in the caregiving field, focusing on you, the family caregiver. An Alzheimer's disease and dementia care expert, Marsha has 15 years of hands-on experience at Arden Courts, a leader in assisted living dementia communities here in the U.S. Marsha covers everything you need to know as a family caregiver, especially if you care for a loved one with Alzheimer's disease or other related dementia or chronic illness. If you have a friend or relative that is also a family caregiver, call them now. They won't want to miss a minute. And let them know they can watch on caregiversolutions.info. And they can listen on WNN 1470 AM in South Florida or nationally on the iHeartRadio app. Now, sit back, relax, and learn from our host, Marsha Teal, as she brings information to you that may just be the caregiving solution you need. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Caregiver Solutions Info Show. I'm Marsha Teal, and I'm your host, and we've been bringing this show to you for over three years now, and I'm so glad that you joined us. We have another awesome program for you. This is for caregivers and for non-caregivers that want to know more about caregiving to help those that they know that are going through the caregiving journey. We bring wonderful guests onto the show, not only caregivers themselves who have walked in the shoes um, of where you're going to be trotting if you are a caregiver, but also a lot of professionals. So today we're going to be talking about something that sometimes is very misunderstood, um, something that it may ultimately come down to a service that you may need and it's good to know about it before you need it. That's what it's all about. We always tell caregivers to be prepared. Don't wait for the last minute to, to learn and to do and to seek information. So this show is all about resources for you. We're going to be talking about hospice care. And I know a lot of people kind of cringe when they hear that word and they, it's, it's uncomfortable for a lot of people. But we're going to be talking about the ins and outs and what it is and some of the misconceptions and tell you the truth about hospice care and, and how it could be a good thing for you and your loved one. Here with me today, I have a representative from hospice, and I'm going to be introducing her now to you. Uh, I'd like you to meet uh, from VTOS Healthcare, 
Dr. Zul Marie Ortiz. Hi, Dr. Ortiz. Hi, Marsha. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for having us. Well, this is such an important topic to discuss. And a lot of people don't understand a lot of what sometimes um, a, a healthcare company like a hospice can provide. So we like to talk about it, um, explore um, some of the issues that people sometimes don't understand, uh, and get that information out to people so that they can plan if this is something that you know may come down into their life with their loved one that they're taking care of. So first of all, I want to ask you in layman's terms, um, explain what hospice is. What does a hospice do? So um, again, thank you for having us. It's such an important message to give to our community. Um, in essence, hospice is a service, a benefit uh, that we garner through Medicare. And our target is patients and families with chronic illnesses. Um, we understand that being a caretaker uh, to somebody with a chronic illness is probably the hardest job mm. that can exist out there. Um, it, it corrodes into the family dynamic. Um, sometimes there's dispute over care, and, and we recognize that and would like to facilitate that for the family. Um, there's different ways where we do this. Um, we go to where the patient is at. It could be the patient is at home or in a nursing home or in an ALF. It could also be that they're admitted in a hospital and um, we're able to transfer the patients into units as well to stabilize them. But I think one of the biggest things of, of hospice is the different levels of care that we have. So let's say that you're a caretaker at home and it, the care is, is being, it, it's, it grows every day as uh, the functionality is hampered. And you know, you used to be able to, to bathe mom but now it's getting more difficult because she used to help you um, with the transfers, but now she's bed bound, she has Alzheimer's, so it's much harder. Um, we have aides that go to the home, depending on how much you need, you need the service, and they provide uh, the bathing. So right there, yes, <laughs> I have a question. Go ahead. Because you're talking about going into the home um, as, a, um, as a caregiver to help the caregiver who's who's the primary caregiver, mm -hmm. and helping bathe and helping with that care. And it doesn't mean necessarily that when someone has hospice services that they're ready to die and go to heaven. No, no. And, and, and actually, I'm really glad that you pointed that out. Uh, these patients, and, and we're talking about very specific illnesses, for example, Alzheimer's, cancer, when it's, it's, it's spread, it's metastasized, when the prognosis is no longer... Uh, great and and we want to be there for 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 them and um specifically um we were talking about the bathing and all that but um we see that sometimes these patients are in the hospital they're in in an acute phase of their illness with the alzheimer's patients they get a lot of infections they have aspiration pneumonia or utis and what we see is that we we are able to help in the acuteness of that phase once they're at home and, 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 and we're able to provide physical therapy or things that, that would make them go back to their baseline, essentially, we are sometimes, we, we discharge them because they've rallied so much and they don't need our services anymore. <laughs> so people can actually go on hospice, get better, and then be discharged from hospice services. So I think that's a big myth out there that people, when they hear the word hospice, that they think the person must be on their way out. And mm -hmm. I think that that is a very confusing to people because when they see somebody maybe that doesn't look so sick, but they're on hospice, I think it's confusing. Why is this person on hospice if they're still, you know, in a wheelchair and they're still eating and, you know, and those kinds of things. So mm -hmm. this is really um, confusing, I think, to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And that's why we want to talk about this and about some of the services that hospice can provide because many people might be losing out on some of the services that possibly could help them. And, and that's our driving force, right? The people that we know that, that we can help greatly, but we're unable to get there because of the negative connotation in, in, in the word hospice. And we work for that benefit every day. 
it 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 should be that once we need it, um, we tap into into that benefit and and not uh, run away from it. And that's what we want to educate our community with. But um, just so that I, I I really explain the levels of care. So um, let's say that that same daughter that is having difficulty bathing that mom. Right. Now mom is agitated and she's screaming and she doesn't recognize her own daughter. Mm -hmm. So now we have an uncontrolled symptom. Mm -hmm. So we have a level that we consider our ICU, which is continuous care. And at that point, because we know that it's, it's not the best thing for them to be moving them to, to the hospital and different places, we can provide LPNs and aides around the clock for our continuous care. So we have regular care which is we, we see you, you're not that sick, so we, we'll see you twice a, a month or once a month. Mm -hmm. Then you have continuous care. Well, a physician will see you three times a week, and there's always presence in the home until we control that symptom. Wow. We also have respite. So that same daughter that's the caretaker, she might have a daughter out of state that is having a child. But as we see with caretakers, they're, they're very much a prisoner of, of the situation and the illness. Mm -hmm. So we're able to to place that patient in our unit, take care of them for an allotted amount of time, and you can go ahead and 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 continue with with your life, and and that's respite care. So so it's a short term it, help for that caregiver that you can provide. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Wow. That you know, I don't know, um, you know, what people would do sometimes if they didn't get respite care. They need a break. It, it, you know, they need to get away. They need um, help. It's overwhelming. Uh, and that's a wonderful benefit. Mm -hmm. Now, I have to say, um, you're with VTOS Healthcare, and you're from the Broward County, the Broward County mm -hmm. Organization of VTOS. Mm -hmm. um, so you represent um, all the uh, workers of VTOS in Broward County. Mm -hmm. However, VTOS as an organization is a national company, isn't it? Definitely. VTOS is national, and it was one of the first uh, hospice companies that was established. Um, the first hospice um, came in 1974 in Connecticut. And by 1976, there were already talks. And it's very interesting because it was initiated by a Methodist, Methodist minister, mm -hmm. Mr. Hugh Westbrook, and Esther Cauliflower, a nurse in Miami. And they saw that there was this population of patients with chronic illnesses that we were not treating as they should. They're very, they come with complications and, and sometimes um, they, they require uh, a set of, of doctors that, that follow the, the medical complications, pain, shortness of breath, all these things that these illness uh, bring about. And they saw that we weren't catering to them. And as a result of that, in 1978, um, VTUS was established, and today it's nationwide. Wow. You know, when I hear the word hospice, I think of compassion. That's what I think of, you know, is compassionate care. Um, you mentioned that when it before it got started that people weren't being treated for some things and and maybe they were but it wasn't in a in a compassionate way either right mm -hmm. because um, it it's very difficult for people to go through these long you know illnesses and the caregiving and I think that a hospice just adds that extra layer of compassion and understanding and in in a healthcare field, and actually, we're we're it's just a specialty that that is also accompanied by palliative medicine. It's hospice and palliative medicine. Well, what that, is that? Explain what palliative and, medicine is. And the is. reason why I'm 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 telling you this is because you talk about an extra layering, but palliative it, the the word uh, the origin is pallium, and the Latin meaning is an extra cloak. Okay. So that's exactly what we are. We are an extra layer. So you've been seen by cardiologists, by neurologists, by all types of doctors. Mm -hmm. We go in there with compassion and try to see uh, what was missed and, and, and to cater more towards the complications that we know will come about from the illness. Mm -hmm. It's, it's about talking about the elephant in the room. Yeah, that's true. I mean, like I said earlier in the introduction of the program, sometimes people cringe when they hear that word hospice because of maybe some experience that they've had or maybe because they don't know what hospice can do for them. And so we don't want to cringe when we hear that. We want to embrace it uh, because it can be a good thing. So 
a lot of myths, you know, regarding hospice care. So the first one we talked about that um, obviously you don't have to be on your way to heaven within a week in order to receive benefits under hospice. So we talked about that. Um, you also mentioned that uh, a person taking hospice or getting hospice services can be in almost any setting. And I think a lot of people think that if you're on hospice, you have to go into a hospice hospital or a hospice unit. Mm -hmm. But as you said before, not necessarily so. So I think more and more people now are choosing um, if they're home to stay at home. So hospice comes into the home. Mm -hmm. um, but you also mentioned that you go into nursing homes and you also go into assisted living facilities. And why would somebody want you to go into an assisted living facility? I thought, you know, um, they take care of everything. So explain what you, how you work with an assisted living facility. A great question. Um, we were actually meeting with, with uh, the administration of uh, an ALF today. And um, it's, it's tricky in the fact that if you think about it, if a patient needs hospice, then is an ALF adequate for that patient? And we were actually giving them an education on, on the fact that they, rather than, than pitch hospice, what they say, well, this is not the facility for the patient and, and they, they look to move them. And what we're trying to, to, to tell to, to the ALS facilities and everybody, really the community, is that everybody that sees the need for hospice in a patient should make us aware so that we can get to, to these patients and family that really needs us. You, you, you talk about um, them not understanding the concept of hospice. I've had caretakers cry to me, telling me. The rest of my family was telling me not to call hospice, and I finally did, and you're telling me that you can provide all of these things. So it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a problem that's fixed with education. Yeah, and um, that's a big thing. I mean, education is key when we're talking about this. Mm -hmm. um, I have several more questions to okay. ask you. Uh, this is really great, but we're going to stop for a quick commercial break. So we'll be right back. Stay with us, and we'll be right back with Dr. Ortiz. Arden Courts is not just a place to live. It's a place to call home. Residential living combined with quality caregiving. This is the philosophy behind Arden Courts. Communities created exclusively for individuals with Alzheimer's disease and related dementia who would benefit from a safe and structured environment. For additional information about any of the unique services Arden Courts provides, call 888 478 2410 to locate a community nearest you. Inquire about our educational seminars, resource library, or support groups, or simply feel free to ask questions you may have about Alzheimer's and related dementias. At Arden Courts, we know, we understand, and we can help because memory care is all we do. Remember, call 888 478 2410 for additional information about any of the unique services Arden Courts provides. Wandering is a common problem for people with Alzheimer's or related dementias. It's also a problem for family members who care for them. Keeping them safe and secure means never letting your guard down. And even though deep down you know it's time, it hurts to have to ask for help. But it could hurt them even more if you didn't. We know, we understand, we can help. Arden Courts. The inability to recognize the obvious often occurs with Alzheimer's, particularly among the family members who care for them. Wandering is a common problem for people with Alzheimer's or related dementia. Marcia, now back to Caregiver Solutions. Welcome back to Caregiver Solutions Info. Today we're talking about hospice care. And my guest today is from VTOS Healthcare, which is a hospice here uh, in, representing Broward County. Uh, although uh, VTOS is a national organization, they have um, different uh, offices and services all across the country. And my guest today is uh, Dr. Ortiz, and she is the Associate Medical Director of VTOS Healthcare in Broward County. 
Um, so, Dr. Ortiz, thank you again for being here. It's, it's so good to uh, talk with you and, you know, dispel some of the, the myths and things that people don't understand about hospice. As an associate medical director, what is your role? What do you do? What do you provide? That's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I pretty much uh, am all over the place regarding the county. I go to ALFs, nursing homes, and at times hospitals. But um, as a medical director, it's overviewing that our care is, is given at, at the highest uh, level. So I oversee many doctors. Um, we divide the county in teams, and each team has a each uh, each county has its own doctor, its own team manager. So I'm overseeing that that the process is 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 occurring the way that it it should be. Okay, so you're under over quality assurance and and making patient sure, care, patient care, yes. making sure everything is done the way it's supposed Correct. to. So that's that's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that people sometimes ask is. How is hospice paid for? Is it expensive? Can I afford it? How do I um, get? How do I get hospice care? What? There's a lot of questions. So, mm -hmm. um, talk to that. So, uh, the way that uh, you are eligible for for hospice, it's a Medicare benefit. Uh, so, if you've worked uh, and if you check your your payments, it actually tells you how much will go to Medicare. So it's, it's something that we work towards. Um, it doesn't mean that everybody that's enrolled in hospice uh, has Medicare. Mm -hmm. um, we do charity as well. Okay. Um, and, um, but usually it's, to, it's through Medicare. There's some people that um, haven't worked in the United States, for example, uh, come from South America and, and, and are able to pay for, for the services. But there's many ways that that, that you can have the services, but usually it's through Medicare. Okay, usually some, it's a Medicare benefit, and that's important to know. Um, so you talked about teams, and you have different teams. What are some of the disciplines that would be on a team, and how, how do their roles interact? Okay, so um, hospice and palliative medicine is a holistic approach in that we are a team. The doctor the nurses that go see the patient. Uh, we have a social work component, which, which caters to the psychosocial issues. And we have chaplains that, that also uh, take care of the spiritual aspect. An example is a, a patient can have pain uh, originating from a breast cancer to the spine. As a physician, I can give you the medications that, that will probably ameliorate that. But if you're a mom of three and you're trying to figure out who's going to take care of my children. I could treat the pain, but that's a psychosocial, spiritual aspect, and that requires counseling. So we work as a team to see what are the needs of, of, of that patient at that time. Um, it, it's, it's important to say that all of us uh, kind of uh, have some understanding of, of, of the social work part. If we're not with somebody or with a chaplain for the spiritual part, we, we can do some of it. Um, but we work as a team, and, 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 and the best thing that I can do for that patient that has metastatic breast cancer is, is tell my chaplain, um, I need you to pay a visit because there are concerns, and the social worker as well. Mm -hmm. um, we're worried about the children. Are they in counseling? So we really cater to the patient and family through this journey. You know, and, and that's another thing that I think people don't understand is that hospice services are not just for the patient but it's a benefit for the entire family, right? So you mentioned the children. I mean, the children sometimes, you know, are devastated when there's, you know, a death that's, you know, coming up in the family and they don't understand sometimes. Um, spouses, you know, they need that support. So um, hospice, again, instead of that, mm -hmm. Ugh, you know, kind of feeling, it's like, let's open up, let's open our mind and embrace this mm -hmm. and see what it can do mm -hmm. for us, not to us. Definitely. And you, and you touched on, on the children. And, and I think one of the things that is great about uh, hospice is the fact that we provide bereavement one year after your loved one passes. Yes, and we're going to be um, actually talking to one of your bereavement managers Definitely. in a few minutes, Definitely. and we're going to talk all about that. So on the team, we have nurses, you have caregivers or aides or, mm -hmm. you know, um, people that do hands-on, mm -hmm. right? 
Um, you have doctors, mm -hmm. you have social workers, and sometimes I think you even have um, some therapists, right? Like music, music therapy. therapy. Yeah, talk Definitely. a little bit about that. Definitely. So we have a music therapy program, and what we see is that sometimes when the traditional route doesn't work, like the medication for the pain, we've sent the social worker, we've sent the chaplain, Sometimes something as simple as, as having somebody playing the guitar, uh, your favorite songs, decreases pain, makes the symptoms better, and all around their quality of life is, is best. And, and you can say that about aromatherapy and then different interventions of the sort that we're able to do meditation. Wow. So all of that is something that you can offer to the patient. Mm -hmm. And I think that what you just said is, is key quality right quality quality of life they're still here mm -hmm. and we want quality of life all the way through to the end if you know if if possible and i think that's very very important um it is um difficult for families you know mm -hmm. to be going through this mm -hmm. um so if somebody uh is listening and they are thinking gee i didn't know that right and i need to know more i want to learn more or if someone has a loved one who is not doing well, right? Mm -hmm. And they're thinking maybe I should investigate to see if hospice services would be good for us. Mm -hmm. How do they do that? Do they do they just call? Do they have to talk to their primary care physician first? Mm -hmm. how, how does that work? So we have availability via phone. Um, we are a 24-7 service um, that you can contact us and we can set up a, a, a meeting for, for either a nurse uh, or a doctor, whoever is needed at that time, to give some counseling on, on the service. And, and we're able to do that. Um, so you don't need a referral first in order to call? So ideally, okay. we need a, a referral to, to give the service, but sometimes it's families who are requesting information and, and we don't need a referral for that. We'll go and give them the information and we also have a website that kind of says what, all the services that we are able to provide. Okay, and that website is vitas.com? Okay, <laughs> yep. great. So families can actually, um, you know, on their own call, look up the information and maybe they just want to talk to somebody to, to find out if it's something that they should even consider. Sure. Yeah, I think that's very, very important. Um, Marsha, you mentioned children and I just wanted to touch on that. Um, sure. We also have a, a children's camp where kids can go with peers that have experienced loss. Mm. And that's, uh, I've, I've seen this and it's transcendental. It's, it's, they are able to do a campfire and, 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 and just they lift uh, some floating uh, um, candles and uh, are able to just be with their peers and, and who know what they've experienced. And yeah, it's very, very important healing. Because um, children, you know, they, other children sometimes just can't relate to what they're going through. And I think that's another really, really good benefit. And I know even for children, for grandchildren, right, who have lost grandparents even mm -hmm. is something that they could take advantage of this. So really um, the hospice services that VTOS provides are really for everybody uh, depending upon their circumstance and their need. Absolutely, everybody. Well, I thank you mm -hmm. so much for being here, for explaining all about the VTA services. Um, you know, we we all need that to, to be more aware. And I think if the, the caregivers are out there and they're aware and they can, you know, have that conversation um, and it doesn't have to be something that you're afraid of mm -hmm. to talk about. Definitely, yeah. I agree. And, and we're more than happy to provide the service for our community. And we know that it's very tough to to live through the through a chronic illness like this and we just want to help yes that's absolutely right mm -hmm. well thank you again we're going to take a commercial break and we'll be back with more information from vitas about hospice services so stay with us the inability to recognize the obvious often occurs with alzheimer's particularly among the family members who care for them when the time comes for you to decide that someone you love needs more help than you can give, will you be able to recognize it? Don't wait for a crisis to make the decision for you. Talk to us. We know. We understand. We can help. Arden Courts. 
Wandering is a common problem for people with Alzheimer's or related dementias. It's also a problem for family members who care for them. Keeping them safe and secure means never letting your guard down. And even though deep down you know it's time, it hurts to have to ask for help. But it could hurt them even more if you didn't. We know. We understand. We can help. Arden Courts. Being unable to recognize the obvious often occurs with Alzheimer's or related dementias, even among their caregivers. When the time comes for you to decide that someone you love needs more help than you can give, will you be able to recognize it? Don't wait for a crisis. Solutions.info. If you have a question or wish to share a story, call into the show at 888-565-1470 and talk with Marcia. Now, back to Caregiver Solutions. Welcome back. I'm glad you could join us today. I'd like to take this opportunity now to thank our national sponsor, Arden Courts Memory Care Community. Arden Courts has about 50 communities across the United States. They have actually here in Florida 10. Uh, in Palm Beach County, too, and, hosp and uh, the, we work with the hospices, and we're talking about hospice today. So I want to let you know that Arden Courts cares about the caregiver also, and you have an opportunity today to get a wonderful resource from Arden Courts. This is a book. It's called The 36-Hour Day. I can't say enough good about this book. It's a great resource, a great tool for caregivers. It explains dementia, Alzheimer's. It explains um, differences in different types of dementia. It's a really good tool for, for caregivers. And if you're a caregiver, it doesn't have to always be about um, a, a dementia type of diagnosis. Caregiving is a lot of it overlaps to any kind of care, whether it's um, you know a cancer or any other kind of illness. Um, caregivers have it tough. And anything you can do to educate yourself and help others is a wonderful thing to do. So I'd like to uh, invite you to call Arden Courts on their toll-free line, which is 888-478-2410, to get this book absolutely free. And again, 888-478-2410. Let them know that you heard about the offer on the Caregiver Solutions Info Show, and they'll be happy to get your name and address and make sure that they mail a copy of this book absolutely free right to you. So we're talking about hospice care, and we have invited VTOS here today, and VTOS is a hospice. Uh, we are talking to a team out of Broward County, uh, the Broward County team of VTOS, and VTOS is a national organization. And there's a lot of things that people don't know about hospice care, and we're explaining all of those today. Now we're going to be switching gears a little bit. We talked to the Associate Medical Director, Dr. Ortiz, and now with me is Chaplain Mitch Hussar. Hi, Chaplain. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you. Thank you for coming. This is something that uh, we want to talk about because obviously it, when people are um, going on to a hospice, right, um, we talked about compassionate care yep. and we talked about being there for the family. So you're a chaplain and you're actually the bereavement services manager for VTOS. As that position, what is your role? What do you do? Thank you for having us. It's a privilege. Uh, we, uh, my job is to coordinate the bereavement services that the program offers to uh, the patients, the families, and also to the community because we have a mission to be available to the community at large, Broward County, um, and uh, basically we provide uh, services through uh, bereavement phone calls. When the person passes away, one of our patients, we reach out uh, within uh, uh, two or three days to call the family to extend uh, condolences. Uh, we send a condolence card, we send condolence letters, we send literature, as Dr. Ortiz mentioned, for 12 months. We keep in touch with the families. We invite them to attend support groups that we have. We have about 30 grief support groups uh, throughout the county. And uh, we try to be available also for one-on-one -on -one counseling for complicated cases. Wow, that's a lot. Now, I have to say, um, I know about your um, reaching out, and I know about your continuous um, 
com- conversations right. and and contact with the families because um, unfortunately my mother passed away about oh. a year and a half ago. Condolences. But she thank you. But she was under VTOS care here in Broward County, and uh, I did receive at my home the phone calls. I did receive the newsletters with all the information, uh, the support, the uh, invitations to support groups, yes. and it did continue for a whole year. Yeah. And uh, I just thought that was very good uh, because sometimes people, when um, someone, someone passes that right. you love, right, um, sometimes you're almost in like a denial that that it hasn't happened and you're almost like in shock and you might not need anybody right then because you don't think you do right but sometimes this hits you later down the road right and then if it does you have the resources and the information right at your fingertips provided to you on an ongoing basis and absolutely. i think that's wonderful absolutely you you hit the nail on the head that's exactly the term we use in grief counseling uh, it's a state of shock and numbness and people it takes about three months for people to really get in touch with their feelings the first three months after the loss people are busy with uh, uh, obviously a funeral or memorial service uh, taking care of the paperwork and the state and all that so three months later they finally realize this has happened I'm without my wife, or I'm without my husband, uh, or I'm without my dad, or without my mom. So uh, the calls come come in usually after three months, and they reach out to us in response to our uh, literature and such and ask for help. Yeah, that's awesome. I think, too, that um, when someone reaches out, I, I think that sometimes they don't even know that they need help. Isn't yeah. it usually maybe a friend or a family member that sees something in that person yeah. that's still not quite yeah. right yeah. and they actually recognize yeah. it yeah. before the, the person does yeah. that's experiencing this? Yeah. Have yeah. you had that happen? We do, we do, and uh, uh, we, we take the call and I usually ask uh, if uh, they are calling uh, for themselves or they calling for somebody else and that's very common actually. And I ask if they have received permission from the person who is grieving to... Uh, have this uh, good friend reach out to us and they they usually say yes or they say I'm just calling to ask for more information so I usually would try to talk to the person because if the person is not ready to receive help then our uh, outreach is basically for not so yes that's true now how long have you been um, a chaplain with the hospice organization um, right after I graduated from seminary and I did my chaplaincy school at the University of Miami in 1999, I was hired by VITAS and I've been working ever since. It's a wow. privilege. Wow, long time. Yeah, yeah. 17 years, yeah. almost 18. Long yeah. time. Well, you're, yeah. you're, you're with me. I've been with Arden Courts for 17 years, so <laughs> I'm, right, I'm right there with you. So yeah. when you find your calling, right, yeah, you stick calling. with it. Yeah. 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 So um, as a chaplain, are you the one that that counsels with the family you you do the prayers or what if there's something else that they need that is not within your realm how does that work out what can you do to help well we uh, in chaplaincy we talk about the mystery of presence so we want to be there for people for patients for families for staff like dr ortiz mentioned nursing homes or assisted living facility or hospital staff we are there for them as well so we are working hard to bring a ministry of presence, compassionate presence uh, for the uh, people I mentioned. And if, for example, we have a patient who is uh, Roman Catholic, I am a Protestant minister, I always reach out to a Catholic priest uh, in the parish and uh, the Catholic Church is wonderful, responding very promptly to send a priest or sometimes Eucharistic minister to administer the, uh, they don't call them uh, last rites anymore, but uh, the anointing of the sick. Uh, If the person is, for example, Jewish, Obviously, we, we want to honor the uh, Jewish faith as well, and we invite a rabbi to come, and we work with, we have actually two rabbis on staff, and we reach out to the rabbis in the community, and they come and they provide the service uh, for the people, of the people of the Jewish faith. But the chaplain is trained to be able to understand multiple faiths, and uh, the ministry is actually interfaith, so we are able to uh, read the prayer in, in Hebrew, for example, but it's always more beneficial, I feel, for the family to receive uh, spiritual care for the pers- from the clergy of their own tradition. And that's wonderful that you can <coughs> provide that. We so do. it doesn't we matter do. what religion you are, or even if you don't have a religion, right. you're going to be comforted by Correct. 
by the the chaplain type care that Correct. that VTOS can provide. That's wonderful. Right. Um, so, last question: If someone's listening to us and they're thinking, "Wow, that's kind of um, kind of sad and discouraging," because you're talking about uh, grief and talking to them about um, what has happened after their loved one passes. Right. But is there something that they can do prior to that? Do you have any role in being with the family to prepare them for yeah. what's to come? Right. We do, actually. Um, when I used to visit in the field, I visited for about seven years as a chaplain. I attended at least 1,000 deaths in seven years. Uh, we tried to... Uh, I used to teach the families to... Uh, uh, do what we call gratitude visit, uh, to take a piece of paper and to write uh, the top 10 things for which they are grateful for the person who was uh, about to transition into the afterlife. And that helps tremendously first uh, uh, the family to say their goodbye because people usually are in a state of limbo. They don't know what to say, what to do. Even people who have a lot of education, it's a new experience for them. Mm -hmm. It's also helpful for the dying person, you know, say if he's a mother dying, the mother wants to know if she was a good mom to mm -hmm. her family. So if the children express gratitude or uh, the husband, uh, it's very important. And uh, it's important for us as well to know that we uh, reach out to the people and we're able to guide them uh, to make this uh, as palatable or as easy as possible. It's a tough time, obviously. Yeah, I like that, the gratitude list. Sure. And that helps with that easing yep. into the final yeah. you know, end of life with right. gratitude to be more uh, appreciative and, and more loving toward yep. and feeling those feelings um, to transition because a lot of people, you're right, they don't know what to say or what right. to do, and I think that gives them a focus. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. that's wonderful. Well, thank you for being here right. with us today. I appreciate everything that you do and, sure. and keep doing it. Sure, thank you. <laughs> thank you for having us. Oh, it was awesome. Thank you. So uh, we're going to take a last commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to hear more from the VTOS team in Broward County, so stay with us. The inability to recognize the obvious often occurs with Alzheimer's, particularly among the family members who care for them. When the time comes for you to decide that someone you love needs more help than you can give, will you be able to recognize it? Don't wait for a crisis to make the decision for you. Talk to us. We know. We understand. We can help. Arden Courts. Wandering is a common problem for people with Alzheimer's or related dementias. It's also a problem for family members who care for them. Keeping them safe and secure means never letting your guard down. And even though deep down you know it's time, it hurts to have to ask for help. But it could hurt them even more if you didn't. We know. We understand. We can help. Arden Courts. Feelings of depression, isolation, and frustration are common among persons living with Alzheimer's or related dementias. It's common among those who care for them, too. It takes a lot of patience and courage. It also takes knowing when you can no longer do it alone. At Arden Courts, memory care is all we do. Talk to us. We know. We understand. We can help. Don't let guilt keep you from making the right decision. Visit arden-courts.com. Arden Courts follows Equal Housing Opportunity Guidelines. Care Expert on caregiversolutions.info. If you have a question or wish to share a story, call into the show at 888-565-1470 and talk with Marsha. Now, back to Caregiver Solutions. Welcome back to Caregiver Solutions. Today we're talking about hospice care and all the things that people really need to know about hospice care and maybe we're afraid to ask. So we're bringing all that information to you to educate and to dispel a lot of the myths. We've talked to Dr. Ortiz, who is the Associate Medical Director at VTOS Healthcare in Broward County. And then we also spoke to Chaplain, uh, Chaplain Mitch Hussar, who talked about bereavement services and, and how that can help a family even before someone passes. So it's all good. 
And speaking of good, our last segment now, we're going to be talking about volunteering. And it's always good to volunteer. So with me to talk about that, also from VTOS Healthcare, is Esther Cohen. Esther is the Volunteer Services Manager uh, at the Broward County VTOS. And she is joined by uh, her volunteer, Wendy Levine. And hello, Esther, and hello, Wendy. Hello, hello Marsha. <laughs> so let's talk about volunteering. Um, why does VTOS have volunteers? We talked about teams with all mm -hmm. the medical component, but why volunteers? Well, Marsha, volunteers is a very essential part of the interdisciplinary team, as Dr. Ortiz and Mitch had discussed with you before. So volunteers are just regular, ordinary people, just with a big heart Aww. and they're there to help the caregivers help the patient give them a hand just be just do whatever they need just to be a friend yeah because you know a lot of people that go through um this you know experience mm -hmm. sometimes they don't have family local sometimes they don't have friends because their friends have actually um gone by the wayside because they just disappear on them they don't mm -hmm. know what to do um, they're kind of alone sometimes. Yes. And even though you have the other team members, they're more on the medical side, Correct. right? Yes. So by having a volunteer who's, let's say, been there, done that, mm -hmm. I think that it could be very comforting to somebody yes. saying that, gee, you really understand. You, you've walked mm -hmm. in my shoe and you understand what I'm going through. You couldn't have said it better. Aww. <laughs> um, so, Wendy, why are you a volunteer for VTOS? I used VTOS for both my parents when they were passing and VTAS was so incredibly supportive to me, not just to my parents where they, they did an excellent job taking care of my parents, but the nurses, the aides, the social workers, you know, every single person that came in contact with either of my parents also made sure that they made contact with me that they made sure I was okay through this process. And I thought that um, as a caregiver, you know, as being a caregiver before, that I wanted to give back to VTAS because of the wonderful things they did for me. Well, that's wonderful. Giving back is always so great. And, you know, I love our volunteers in, in any capacity, mm -hmm. you know, that they have the heart for it. So what kind of volunteering opportunities can you provide as the manager of that department? Okay. Well, we have different various um, parts to the volunteer department. So you could be a volunteer as a, in the administrative area. So for those that want to do things behind the scenes, help with the charts, help with, you know, doing the folders for admissions behind the scenes, they're so important, especially for events and upcoming programs that we need assistance. Um, we also have patient care coordinators and uh, I mean patient care volunteers, excuse me, and they're the ones that actually go visit the patients. So they're, you know, as Wendy was, you know, visiting patients and um, giving them a hand and, you know, just, you know, doing things that they would love, you know, whether just talking about their family life, talking about, you know, what they're doing now, talking about so it's more events. like socializing, a social visit. Exactly. You're not expected to do anything medical or any kind of oh, hands-on, no. <laughs> but it's a it's a social visit and to, to talk and and you know maybe you can make somebody laugh. You know exactly. maybe you can uh, create some uh, memories that that uh, they remember by talking about what happened in the past and bringing those things mm -hmm. to life, and that gives comfort to people. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's a thing called life history where they could actually review their life and talk about it. And these are things that you could leave as a legacy for their families as well. That's so, awesome. Yes, it's so a wonderful thing. A lot of things to do. What? Um, how long have you been volunteering? Oh, well, three years. Three years, wow. So, um, not to put you on the spot, but... Go, um, go ahead, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so, can you recall some special volunteering um, day or a time that really stands out in your mind of that really made a difference either for you or for the patient that you could talk about without naming names? I think every single encounter I've had has made a difference. I've done served ice cream to people in nursing homes 
for, I can't even remember, it was a holiday. You know, I think it was 4th of July. You know, my husband and I served ice cream in nursing homes. I have done um, meditation with patients um, and their spouses and families in their homes that have, you know, helped them be more calm and relaxed and able to cope better. Um, <clears throat> I've stuffed bags full of goodies for people to take with them, you know, that they, the marketing people give out. Uh, I can't even think of all the things I've done. I've worked with caregiver support groups doing meditation. Um, my last patient um, happened to be one of my neighbors. Aww. And that I already knew him. And so I would, um, he, he loved to tell life stories. And his kids were, you know, his son and daughter-in-law were there. And they were just, they stories they had never heard before. But I was in his age group, so he, you know, he talked about things that we both could relate yeah, to. Yeah, could relate to that. That's wonderful. And they all laughed. Yeah. So do you um, have certain days or times uh, that you must volunteer? Or is it whenever you can? Is, is it up to you of how often or how... Um, frequent that you do this volunteering? There are minimums, but I've never even asked what the minimum was because my feeling is the more I can give, the better off everybody is. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you, Wendy. Um, so talk about that, um, Esther, about volunteering and, and opportunities and how does somebody get involved if they want to give back? Well, first off, uh, anyone that's interested could always call us at VITAS in Broward. The number is 954-777-5396. Uh, and someone will always be there, myself or my coordinators. And um, so the other way is that we do have mailings uh, where we are having orientation. And our next orientation is on Friday, March 23rd. And so, you know, we do have That's to, for the volunteers. For the volunteers. Okay. So every volunteer has to go through orientation. You know, there is uh, a requirement. We do a background check and we also do a TB test. So that's for the patient care coordinators. Okay. And so definitely if anyone has any interest or wants more information, please reach out. It is so vitally important. Um, we also have student you know, students coming for community service hours. Really? And so I know many people out in the community, their, their children need hours. So, you know, we welcome them. And obviously, you know, they may do more of the administrative, mm -hmm. but on occasion due to maturity, they may come into a more clinical setting. Wow, that's wonderful. So you can never have too many volunteers, right? Never. We also have volunteers that do sewing and they do knitting and crocheting. So we make beautiful lap robes and um, booties for the patients. Mm. We also, as you know, we do memory bears that um, this is a wonderful thing for those that have never seen it before. I, I wish I brought one, actually, I should have. Mine's in the making, right? <laughs> and that's actually how we met that's because right. I happened to learn about the memory bears uh, that since my mom was under VITAS uh -huh. care in Broward, I was able to bring articles of clothing that she That's wore right. that we remember her wearing and bring them to you, to your department for your volunteers. And then they cut and sew those pieces of clothing into a cute little teddy bear. A beautiful teddy bear that they could always, the you know, the family could always look back and remember their loved one. And they're actually, they feel like they're there with them. And it's very special. That is awesome. Um, you know, people don't sew a lot these days, so I hope that you never run out of volunteers that can yeah. sew because, you know, you, you think about it, it's almost like a lost art. People, totally. Yeah, it's true. sew by hand or on a machine. Mm -hmm. and, and so I hope that uh, yep. you do find volunteers that if you're crafty and you like mm -hmm. to put things together and sew. And if you don't sew, they probably can stuff, right? Totally. <laughs> <laughs> stuff bears or stuff envelopes, yeah. right? So we're calling out for all the sewers and the knitters and the crocheters. Yes. But we also have another great program called the Poor Pal Program. What's that about? So those are for our friendly cats and dogs and all other animals. I understand, you know, some people love to have their bunny rabbits come visit them 
or lizards. It's a little bit something out of my comfort zone. But <laughs> I'll stick to the dogs and the cats. But we're calling on all the dogs and cats. And basically, you know, it's it's been shown that human nature, you know, we humans love to have be felt cuddled by and they feel the love of an animal yes and so we actually ha need um animals those that are you know they come for an interview <laughs> they do you yes. have to interview the animals yes, too make they make sure that they we get they, along with people that's right mm -hmm. so we have them walk through our our department in in our office at the commercial office and they visit all the employees and we see how they interact it's a wonderful thing. And so the owners of these animals then, once they pass the test, can go visit people on hospice to bring joy to them through animals, if that's something that totally. that person likes. Yes, and the actually the owner would be a volunteer as well. So it would have to go through the orientation. Yes. But the only thing is, is for the, uh, for the pet, they will also have to be current with their rabies shots and immunization. So we do need to have documentation from their vet. So besides cats and dogs, have you really had other kind of animals for, for therapy animals? Yes, I have heard. I'm new in this role, but I heard that we've had bunnies and we've had lizards. <laughs> Well, yes. <laughs> I, I don't like to pet lizards, but if, that, if that's your thing, you know, then that's good. Maybe turtles too, I think. Uh -huh. But whatever makes someone happy. But as you know, it just gives such warmth and joy and puts a smile in everyone's face. When yeah. you go into a home, you know, personal home or into a facility or a hospital, it lights up everyone's that's eyes. That's wonderful. Yeah. So the person that's going to be getting a volunteer into their home, they know that volunteer is coming? Absolutely. So yes. you kind of introduce them before they get there? Yes. So, so they know who to expect and what they're a little bit about? Yes. Yeah, so basically how that works is the team, as was mentioned before, the social worker or the chaplain or the team manager, they would actually send a plan of care to the volunteer department. And so there is proper protocol that has to go through and then we actually assign a you know a volunteer to a pa to the patient uh-huh so whatever is appropriate the team knows that person already and you can then kind of judge who would be a good fit right I love and, that and we try to keep them within the same uh vicinity of where the where the volunteer lives right like 10 15 minutes from where the patient yeah. so they actually choose who they would like to go and make sure it's a good fit. That's wonderful. Well, they, they post a list uh -huh. of the patients that are want volunteers, uh -huh. and they email it to you, and you can pick which one oh, you want. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, so to talk again basis. about the uh, phone number before we end our show, we want sure. to give that phone number well, out again. Thank you, Marcia. Yeah, so the phone number is 954-777-5396. Um, well, thank you both for coming today. It was thank a pleasure to meet us. both of you. Thank you. Uh, if you want more information, you can visit vitas.com and look up everything there. And if you want to talk to someone, then uh, give them a call. They're very happy to talk with you and answer all your questions. And I want to thank you for joining us today also and, and being part of this uh, awesome program. Um, we'll be back next week time which is every tuesday uh, from five to six eastern standard time same place same time in the meantime don't forget give somebody a hug because they need it and so do you right you know yes, about that absolutely word. thank you and take care we'll see you next time Thanks for joining us for this week's Caregiver Solutions with Marsha Teal. Join us next week as Marsha, who has 15 years of Alzheimer's disease and dementia care experience, brings you more needed information to help with the care of your loved one. This show can be seen again on caregiversolutions.info and questions can be left on the site, which may be used on the program to help others. See you next week for more Caregiver Solutions. The opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored program were strictly those of its hosts, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of the station, its staff, management, or sponsors.